And this is the chapter six of Fandelver and Below. In you are in Talhundreth, the Dwarven Hold. You are looking for pieces of black obelisk that have been taken here, and also any villagers that have been taken here. You found neither so far. You've explored most of the Dwarven Hold, but there's still a few dwarves, doors you haven't been through. You wake up from your long rest, undisturbed, gather your gear, and get ready to set out. Let's do some quick intros. So we got RL, your Caliphon. Go ahead. Yep. So Caliphon is a far traveler from the peninsula of Chult, a monk, a brewer, um, just an adventurer. Somebody just trying to experience the world and pick up some IPA or stout recipes on the way. And then we have Josh, you are Gimbal, the auto gnome. Uh, yes, Gimbal is uh, the owner, uh, proprietor, uh, and face of Gimbal's Potion Emporium. Uh, he was not present uh, during a lot of your most recent adventures because he had wandered over to the um, kitchen and had found a uh, uh, some old mint that he has been splicing into his potions, and now he's got a, a new jingle uh Double the mint, double your fun, uh, double your enjoyment of potions, miraculous elixir. Why don't you roll for that right now? <laughs> What's that? Why don't you go ahead and roll for oh, that? Yeah. So See what you uh, get. He, he, he's still workshopping the, the jingle. Uh, the experimental elixir. Oh, both uh, transformations. <laughs> okay. Then we have Ryan. Is Jeff the goblin? Go ahead, Ryan. Uh, hello. Uh, Jeff the goblin is a goblin. Uh, formerly of the Cragmaw clan, specifically the Cragmaw hideout chapter. And uh, he was off enjoying some paid time off and returned to find the clan under new management, uh, left and uh, found himself under the servitude of some uh, bugbears and was rescued by his new friends here. And now he's just kind of adventuring, trying to build up money to start a shoe shop in Fandolin. All right, then we got David uh, Loam, the Elven Ranger, the uh, xenophobic Elven Ranger. Ranger. Xenophobic, yeah. Right. Loam was uh, raised in seclusion, and now he's out in the world. He's a ranger, an elf, raised in seclusion out in the wider world, looking to make and find his way and maybe do some good deeds on the way. And he's confident about those difficult encounters coming because he's probably fat everybody else so it's got that going for him titus robs uh fire ganasi yes titus a uh a, a wanderer from uh a sig sigil uh has come to this world uh of tor toriel tor toral toral something uh just hearing that it was such a strange place and uh, that has not uh <laughs> that that has not uh proved untrue as there's crazy goblins stealing rocks and all these, uh, you know, uh, Medusa ladies that we're dealing with and then making us being very upset with us when we knock on their door and then the rocks and everything else. But yes, Titus is here mechanically a, uh, I don't even remember what level I am. Seven. Level seven? Seventh. Druid. Seventh. Yeah. Uh, wildfire druid. Oh, it's, it's been a day. I'll tell you after this. Okay, guys. Anyone want to cast any spells before you set out in the Dark Dwarven Holds? No? Okay, Jeff, you're probably in the lead. Where do you want to head, Jeff? Um, I guess so if I have to correct this, these doors over here are the only doors we have not yet? That is correct. Opened? Okay. That is right. So head over that way. Okay. Go ahead and get you guys over there. Uh, I think my computer just crashed. Uh, am I... Am I still in roll 20 or am I out? Uh, you're still in it. I don't know. It's it's acting weird. I think I'm going to have to restart it. So. Okay. I'll move you around. You can tell me what you're doing. I'll describe things to you. This is your chance to play theater of the mind. I know you always <laughs> you know, look forward that. to that. Yep. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, you got these double doors to the south and to the west. Which ones are you going through, Jeff? Now, if I'm, wasn't there a door somewhere that we picked a lock? Oh, no, that was up, that was up there. Um, I think we're going to go west. Shall I assume you're shutting every door behind you? Correct. Okay. So no open doors anywhere in the place. And then you're opening the doors to the west. And doing that reveals reveals a chamber with um, some pretty amazing murals that you guys had 
discovered previously. Hold on just a second. Okay, so the west end of that room, when you open those double doors, it bears an elaborate carving of a mountain filled with gemstones. Each gemstone is in various stages of completion, and stylized Mayan tracks connect each uh, to a large dial in the west wall. You'd found a book that described to you how to decipher the puzzle and unlock the door. And the only thing that you were lacking were gems that you could put into a socket that's in the door, and you now have those gems. So you could open that door on the west wall if you like. Let's do it. Okay. That reveals a flight of stairs that descend down. Okay. We well, better check south first. Yeah. Well, before back we go down. Go to these double doors. Closing the doors behind you that, that go down again? Yes. Yep. Okay. All right. You open these double doors, and you're greeted with a horrendous sight. I'm going to go ahead and get okay. to where you want to be in the room, and then roll initiative. And you're happy where you're standing. I guess i got to be near the door since I opened it, right? Yeah. You're right, right next to it. Ooh. So here is a picture of what you see. This hall has several oh, pillars carved with images of mountains. Some of the pillars are broken and blackened as though from an intense fire. Carved into the west wall is a statue of a dwarven king, stoically gripping a warhammer. An altar at the statue's feet is smashed into rubble, around which hops a brain-sized mass of gelatinous eggs. A black fragment of stone with glowing green details sits amid the rubble. That must be part of the black obelisk. And... Um, you notice a couple of figures like kneeling in prayer before the thing, but the thing must have some sort of supernatural sight because the two figures react immediately, maybe from some sort of subconscious warning they received from it. So those of you who have rolled initiative, good. The rest of you, go ahead and roll your initiative when you're happy where you're standing. Gimbal, I'll roll for you while you're reloading. Thank you. Appreciate it. I don't know what's going on. Uh, it is still... It's thinking. It's Luckily, thinking. you rolled really low. So, yeah, all right, good. You got some time. A little illustration, by the way. Really nice. What'd you say? Uh, that's a great illustration. Oh, really yeah, nice. it is. Really done. All right, Jeff, you are the first to react. Okay, Hard corners those... there at the door, so it'd be two squares of movement to get down south of the door. There's one of those clingy thingies over mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, I think I'll take him out first. Um, I'll just uh, attack him with my short bow from here. When he's. Seven, four, attack on 27 for 10. Wisdom save. DC 16, which I made. Dang. And uh, attack him. Oh, 13? 13. Actually, you know what? Hold on. Hold on. Uh, precision attack? 19 is a hit. For 12. And he's not afraid, so I want to back up and hide. Okay. The first of the mutates uh, stands up, moves and takes cover behind the pillar in the back of the room. And then the cluster at the end of the room. Caliphon, you're one of, maybe the only one who can see this. You guys can all kind of hear the gross, like, um, gross sounds of something being expelled from it. It does a spawn progeny, and three encephalon gemules pop out of it. Um, land nearby. And him. Go. Okay. It's done. And then come the gemules that just popped out. These things are be bopping along the ground, kind of bouncing up and down on their four feet. Uh, they move pretty fast, though. Five, six, seven, eight. That one gets all the way to there, then attacks Caliphon. First uh, tries to leech onto you, Caliphon. It's a bonus action. 14 deck save, or else he'll attach to you. All right. Uh, that is a 10. 10. Okay, so yeah, he attaches onto Caliphon. And then he'll do Psychic Slam on you. Ooh, but missed by a mile. Oof, thank you. While he's attached to you, you're going to take damage at the start of your turn. You can detach him using 5 feet of your movement, or someone else can. And it takes a 15 strength check. Or no, he can mm -hmm. detach. For you to detach, it takes an action and a 15 strength check. Get him off you. Mm -hmm. That's that guy. The next guy is going to go. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. He goes there and tries to leech onto Loam. 14 deck save Loam to dodge out of it way no problem for you six seven nine the second one loan no dc 14 deck save no problem and titus your turn all right uh well super not exciting <laughs> um hey caliphon are you okay with uh a little bit of fire damage sure i love it all right well 
you know, you got evasion, you'll be okay. So we are going to call forth our uh, spirit, and we will put it so... Uh, I heard Jeff shooting at something, so we'll put it right there. And then Califon, you've got to make it as well. It's a dex. Yep, it's a dex. So you only take half, because evasion. And then uh, what we're going to do is... And actually, uh, Califon, you take full, since evasion only helps on dex saves for half, not dex saves for negate. Oh, dang it, that's right. I forgot that it's not a it's not a save for half, it's a save negate. All right, and then, uh, but you've got one attached to you, right? He does. So essentially, I'm going to order it with the bonus action to move on top of Loam. Okay. And then uh, we can all teleport as it moves. All right. I'm just not moving it on top of Loam because... They all made their deck save. Loam and Titus and Califon, you all need to teleport away. <laughs> Unless you want to take some fire damage, possibly. It's a uh, five-foot radius from where you were, Loam. So you're radius. safe teleporting to there. Okay. That's what I want. And Califon, one more square away from where that is. There you go. Now you're safe. Yeah. All right. Titus, nice so work. Can you, Tom, can you explain again? So it's, if I saved, I would take no damage. Yeah, your deck save so triggers on um, when you make a deck save to take half damage. Uh, this wasn't Roger. making a deck save to take half damage. Roger, Roger. I get you now. All right. So the gem mule's turn, uh, the one that was in the room originally, it's going to go six to there and try and leech onto Califon. 14 deck save Califon. The wine. Wow, these saves suck. Well, oh. gotcha. So he leeches yeah. onto you, you're going to damage at the start of your turn, and then he's going to psychic slam you as well. 21 to hit for 9 psychic. That hits. Okay. And they are done. Then we got the second mutate's turn. This one's going to go there, and then you can see due north of him, Gimbal and Califon. He'll go after Gimbal, multi-attack him, sure. first nightmare blast onto you, Califon. 18 to hit for 9 psychic, and he'll frighten you till the start of your next turn. 12 wisdom save negates. Is that Gimbal? That was Califon. I don't think it is. Oh, okay. Okay, okay Califon. So you're frightened. Mm -hmm. uh, so put the frightened symbol on your guy until the uh, start of its next turn. No worries. And then he'll do another Nightmare Blast, and this one on Gimbal. Okay. Oh, yeah. 23 to hit you, Gimbal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you do have cover, if that helps you enough. Uh, I, I don't know. What's my armor class? It's 19, 21 with cover. Shield spell would make it miss if you have that. But you don't, do you? I no, no, okay. sisters don't get killed. So though. that's a hit for nine psychic. I'll take it off your forty five hit points down to thirty six. Then you got a wisdom saving throw, DC twelve. Want me to roll that for you? Thank you. I'm it's slowly but surely. Okay, you made your save, so no fear for you. And Wait. that is its two attacks. It's done. Califon, you start your turn with this thing attached to you. So you're gonna take that damage. It is eight points of piercing. Oh, and nice. then the fear effect that you have going on you, uh Disadvantage on checks and attacks when you see the source of your fear, which is this guy right down here. So as long as you can see him, you have disadvantage. All right. And um, can I move with this thing latched onto me? You cannot really move closer to the source. You can definitely move with it latched onto you. Yeah. Okay. I will take um, 10 feet of movement, move over here. Um, can I hit something two-handed with a longsword if it's attached to me? Yeah. Okay. I will uh, two-handed... 25 for 13. 13. Got it. All right. Uh, I will do it again. Um, yeah, 22 for 10. And then I will strike it with my Talon from the bottom. So bonus action, unarmed attack, the Talon. Now that's only 11 for that's 4 points. Okay. That, I think that I'm still scared, so I will keep on moving to here. Uh, and then I'll end my turn. Your turn, Loam. Okay, Loam, uh, wielding his two short swords, tries to weave a web of steel on these two that are next or close, attacking the one next to it, to him. That is a miss. Second attack. That is a hit. 18. It resists psychic, so it'll take seven, eight, eight points of damage. Okay. And I guess I won't try to do Hunter's Mark. I'll do an offhand attack attack, but I am going to see if they have opportunity attacks by walking that way. Okay, he does. He'll take a psychic slam at you. Hit you for 12 psychic. Ouch! Well, I'm going to try and remove this one from uh, my pal here. My offhand a short sword attack. That finishes it. Well done. After loom, Gimbal. Thank you. you back up, Gimbal. Uh, I will firebolt the 
one I can see clearest, and if there's more than one of those, the most injured. Okay. Your firebolt attack is a 13 to hit, ignoring cover, which unfortunately misses. Dang it. And then, then I will move take cover. Move back a little bit. Yeah. Okay. After Gimbal, that rounds over. Then Jeff, your turn. Okay, we're going to move. Bonus action, hide. And then attack the one. They're, none of them are injured. They are injured, yeah. Oh, let's see. Okay, I'll attack this guy. Oh, am I hidden from that guy? Not there, no. That's the only and one you're hidden from currently, yeah. The one due south of the pillars. All right, that's fine. I'll attack the farthest. Uh... Okay. Did we lose you, Jeff? Oh, sorry. 24 for 12. 12, okay. And again, throw a pushing. So 21 for 12. Oh. Up to 15 feet. You want to do a full 15 feet? Uh, Yeah, full feet. Okay. Finish your move we want. Then we got this guy going there and there. Just before he ducks behind that pillar, he's going to take a shot at Jeff. Um, sure, this will multi attack with his Nightmare Blast on you, Jeff. A 22 to hit for 5 Psychic. 12 Wisdom save or be frightened. I will use my input that needed. Your face, so you have advantage. Well, that's just charm saves. Okay, then his second yeah. shot on you. Uh, 24 to hit for 8 Psychic, another save. Dang and it. he got you. So mark the fear effect. He's going to duck behind the cover there. And then the cluster is going to go. Moves out to there. And then Jamuels are going to go that he spawned, which will be the ones down in the room here. This first one's going to go after the fire creature. Try to leech onto it. Um, 14 deck save to avoid. If you can't be grappled, it doesn't matter. Can't be grappled, so you don't have to worry about can't that. Can't be grappled. And then he'll try and psychic slam the guy. Only an 11. Hey, it misses. Then the next one will go 1, 2, 4. Try and attach onto the Titus. Leeching attack on you, Titus. 14 deck save. Psychic fail. Okay, so he attaches on. He's going to try and psychic slam you. 22 Ow. for 12 psychic. Then your turn, Titus. Start of your turn, you're going to take some damage from attachment to the order of nine piercing. Gotcha. All right. So what we're going to do is uh, Oops. we are... Hold up. I just I missed one of the gamules. This guy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Going after Jeff with the leech attack on you, Jeff. 14 deck save to attach. You dodge him. He'll try and psychic slam you. Only a 14 to hit, which misses Jeff. Okay, now back to you, Titus. All right. Uh, see that miss, but I saw that creature dart to the other side of the column. So what we're going to do is a bonus action, order the spirit to, uh, get in between the columns and teleport us away. And then for my action, uh, we will go ahead and I will conjure up an elemental spirit here. And we will of course make it a fire because that's, what so that's happening. Then that's the end of my turn. The I'll always have the fire spirit go first. Okay. So the fire spirit goes there and fiery teleports away. Okay. I think I got an attack opportunity when he leaves the one next to him. Correct. Uh, 16 for 22 psychic. Ow. And then I got some saves for the teleport. 14 and 10. Miss both of them. Take a fire from both of those guys. Got it. And then the uh, fiery spirit uh, will. Let's, it has to move. So it will go there. And then it will be its turn, and it's going to slam on that one. Uh, 21. Nice hit. Well done. 18 fire. Uh, these things don't ignore fire, so that kills it. Then it will move back and take its second attack on the one that's near me. 14. 14 hit. For another 18. Nice. Yeah. End of turn. I'm feeling feeling better about that. Okay. Mutates will go. I gotta go to there. And then he'll fire on Jeff. No, he'll fire on Gim no, Gimbal. He'll do Gimbal. multi attack and Nightmare Blast on Gimbal. It's only 19 and Gimbal's got coverage. That misses. And that misses. Two misses. And Neat. then Califon, your fear is gone. And it's your turn. All right. Um, all right. I will move around. I will uh, move around the column to in front of the mutate. I will... Throw the javelin at the of lightning at the globule, and I don't see my javelin. Anymore. Oh, There's there a javelin is. in the attack. There, I found it now. Yeah. All right. Uh, six. I will expand. I will aim at the big group hive thing. I will spend three key points and make that a fourteen. The javelin. Fourteen. That is a hit. Or. Nine points of damage, and then um, you know the rest, the 13 lightning. 
for the mutate and the twenty two for it in total. And the one in front of him's got a deck save DC thirteen, which he just fails. So takes thirteen lightning. And then that triggers a reaction from both of them, I think. Defensive flight, take damage, fly speed with no opportunity attacks. This one's gonna fly to there, no opportunity attacks. And then this guy's got aggressive hunger, reaction, hit by attack. Oh, that's not oh, no, you did hit him. Hit by attack, move speed toward attacker without opportunity attacks. If in five feet of attack, make a slam attack. Not fast enough to get to you. And keep going, Calvin. One, two, four. Sorry, just that took me one, two, three, four, five. I will move two more forward. Um, I had a javelin, so I'm guessing my hands are free. So I will take a unarmed attack. 14 for a nine. 14 is a hit. Nine points of slashing, magical. Um, and then I will take my bonus action. I don't have a bonus action because I use my key on that uh, on the All right. Well done, Califon. And then I move away. All right. So After you come, to Loam. Mark. Go ahead, Loam. Oh. Hey, Loam darts out, drops his swords, letting them clatter to the ground. Whips out his bow, uh, casts a hunter's mark on the ball of egg, fires two longbow shots into its. 16 is a hit. 16. It resists psychic, so it's going to take um, 12, 13, 14, 20 damage, I think, right? You did the Hunter's Mark on it, right? Yes, I did. Okay, got it. And a second shot. That also hits 417 more. Nice. I am worried that I have a virus or something. Oh, no. Uh, I don't know what's going on with this thing. Your turn, Gimbal. I was, yeah, I was in, yeah. now I'm out again. Um, could you go ahead and uh, have me firebolt um, the most wounded creature I could see? Okay. And try to figure out what's going on here. Mm -hmm. That is a hit for 18 fire, almost killing it. Better cover. And then the round is over. And Jeff, your turn. Uh, I will, Jeff will bonus action, disengage, move back to here, attack the mostly dead den mule. Finished yeah. it. Three, three for nine, yeah. And then take my second attack to the big bunch of grapes there. Ooh. Uh, uh, yeah, precision attack. So 18 for that. No, for 10, because I'll throw a fury the small on there. Can you do both of those in one? Precision might be one you can double up on. Positive. Oh, uh, well, fury the small is not a. Um, oh, fury the small. Got maneuver. It. Okay. Yeah. So 10 damage. Got it. Yep. And then I'm going to head. Keep moving. And that's it. Okay, after Jeff, uh, the mutate in the back there. It's going to go to there. Fire on Caliphon with the Nightmare Blast. You have cover Caliphon, that misses, and that misses, and then take cover there. And then the cluster will go. It was four there, there, there. Multi attack with slams. First slam on you, Caliphon. 13 is a miss. Yes. Second slam on you. 15 is a miss. Or is it? Or is it? So, I... As long as you attacked with your sword, you should be good. I did not. Oh, no. So it's a hit. That's a hit for 21 bludgeoning and 17 psychic. Misses. Uh-oh. Is that going to kill you? Uh, it is going to definitely drop me. Drop you to zero. He kills you and consumes yeah. you. You see Caliphon pulled into the brain and effectively <laughs> killed. Oh, no. <clears throat> then, uh... Oh, just got real. That was both of its attacks. <laughs> it's done. Wow. Then we got Jemuel going. All the ones that spawned. One south here, go after this elemental. First try to leech onto it. The elemental can be grappled, which it can. Um, 14 dex save for the elemental. He dodges that, no problem. And then a psychic slam on the elemental. 21 for 18 psychic. It's done. And then Titus, your turn. All right. Well, that's super scary. Uh, so what we're going to do... All back. Uh, a little bit, a little bit. All right, so we will we will go ahead and go to here, and I will. Uh, you know what? Let's just. I uh, will provoke the attack of opportunity. All right, he will do his unarmed strike on you. Fourteen. Yes, it misses, and uh, super exciting. Uh, then we are gonna go ahead and uh, produce flame on the creepy dude that just ate our bird friend. Okay. I am going to give you my inspiration. 
Reduce flame. That's a hit. For a uh, horrible seven fire. Seven. Got it. And then I will keep hold on, moving. Hold on just a second there. It'll do its uh, aggressive hunger reaction, hit by an attack, move its speed toward you. If it ends next to you, it'll try and slam you. 19 to hit you. That, that's going to hit. 20 bludgeoning and 19 psychic. Concentration check. If you're concentrating. Sure. Let's see, that's a 49. No, 39. It's a DC 19. Yep, fail. Okay, and then a DC 18 strength save or be knocked pro. Okay, and then continue, continue your turn. All right, well, I guess I will stand up from prone because I have exactly half my movement left. Uh, well, that was super scary. Uh, so then what we're going to do is uh, bonus action. We will bring the fiery spirit over here and we will attempt to fiery teleport away. Okay, so it's deck save. It's got um, magic resistance, so that was a 15, so it made it. Don't forget to take your 39 damage to Titus. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's it for you. That's it for your fire spirit. And then the fire spirit will move, teleport away. It'll end there. Okay. <laughs> then we have this mutate. There. It's time for them to get ready for bed now, is the point that I was trying to make. Oh <laughs> my god, I'm going to meet you, Josh. I'm sorry. <laughs> then the uh, mutate will come for uh, Jeff. Closes on you, Jeff. multi attack you. Uh, unarmed strike on you. 29, or 19 for 12 bludgeoning and 11 psychic. And attacks again on you. Ooh, missing you bad. Now that Jeff, 33 damage, or 23 damage, Jeff. There we go. Okay, that was the mutate. It's done. Caliphon's dead. Loam, your turn. Okay, Loam is going to move advantage. Um, that thing has already done its uh, charge, I think. So I'm going to try and feather it with a couple more arrows. Miss. Nerves are getting to you. That hit. There we go. Nine, ten, it's not the 15. nerves. It's the cloud of feathers that it <laughs> coughed up a second ago. <laughs> All right. I uh, got the damage. 15 damage on that one. Still alive, huh? Still alive, yep. Then, Gimbal. I'm going to unmute you now. Are you back on the computer yet, Gimbal? Well, it, it's, yeah, but I'm not logged into Roll20 yet. So, not quite yet. Um, Want to do a Firebolt on it? Yeah, let's just do a Firebolt. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. It's okay. From there, you can actually I'll just move you closer so you have no cover. Firebolt it. You know cover anyway, didn't you? Okay. God, yeah. I only rolled a 12. That's a miss. That's half Gimbal's turn. Jeff's turn. Can I, if I, I know I can't end in this space as another creature, but can I open those doors as a free action and move through? You want to go through the doors? Yeah, you can go through the doors. Yeah. Okay, so bonus action, disengage. Open those doors as a free action here and attack that uh, grapes, sponger grapes. Uh, well, yeah, it's probably immune to fear, but I'll throw a menacing attack for the extra damage. So 16 for 16. 16. That is enough. You finish it. Yes. It collapses in a pool of sludge and slime. Uh, you still got one of the gamules left and two mutates left. So your next shot, Jeff? I, oh, I guess to the mutates. I don't think I can see the gemule. So the mutates let out a cry of anguish and, and anger. Uh, 18. 18 for 12. That's a hit for 12 piercing. And with that, it'll use its defensive flight. Close up on Titus. Then, after Jeff comes, mutate to the south, who's face-to-face -face with Loam right here, all of a sudden. So it will um, multi-attack, Nightmare Blast you, Loam. 22 to hit for 11 Psychic, and DC 12 Wisdom save or be frightened. No problem. Take another shot at you. Uh, that's only an 8. 8, that's a miss. Try and take some cover there. Done. Gamule's turn. Closest thing to it is this guy. Can't leech. Psychic Slam. 24 for 18 Psychic. That's how much it's got. And then it's done. And then Titus, your turn. All right. So I just saw the spirit. So what we're going to do is uh, we're gonna be like, hey, Lobe, I think we're leaving. And we will go ahead and summon the spirit again. And so it'll be at full power right there. And I click my thing. Okay, Dexay. We're not leaving. We've got a obelisk chunk to grab in this room down here. Made it. They both made it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> We've got a mission. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, let's see. I guess I'll just reposition us. Bonus action. Uh, Gimbal, you can uh, teleport as this guy will teleport us. All right. 
another setup. Uh, Made it. Well, nope. then I, I yeah. will. Oh, how many feet can I teleport? 15. 15 to a spot a Titus could see or you could see. I never. The creature. The creature, okay. That's the end of our turns. All right. After Titus mutates turn, the one to the north. Oh, he's got Gimbal, he's got Jeff, he's got Titus, he's got Elemental. Uh, let's go after the most one without cover. So that'll be Jeff. Nightmare Blast, Jeff. This is you. And 20 Jeff for 10 Psychic and a 12 Wisdom save or be afraid. Age or save. 10 Psychic. He's done. Caliphon, your turn. Oh, sorry. Uh, Loam, your turn. <laughs> well, you have All right. <laughs> Loam is going to drop his uh, Hunter's Mark on that one that he's facing down. Hit him with a couple of arrows. That's a hit for 9, 10, 15. Second attack. 13, 14, 15 more. And he's going to get out of easy sight. After Loam comes Gimbal. Uh, okay, Gimbal is going to use his Wand of Binding and cast uh, Hold Person on uh, this Mutate here. Um, good chance it's not a person. And uh, let me double check. You would know if it's oh. not. I'm just going to double check. Humanoid Mutate is a aberration. So, so it would Hold Monster Yeah, work? Hold Monster would work. All right, let's do that. Okay, you can click the wand. It'll tell us what the saving throw is. It'll be W dash by yep. right old here. monster takes five of your seven charges, 17 wisdom Ooh. saved at gates. Wisdom. Got him. He is held. Nice. Okay. And that is concentration for you to hold that. And we'll yep. you move where you want. And Jeff, your turn. All right. Now just remind me hitting him. Isn't going to like free him or anything, right? It like will not free him. Okay. Yeah. So let's take him out. Hit if you go away. within five feet of him, you crit him. Yep. Okay. Good Gotta like that. So that's a 13. That's a hit for 8. Magic piercing. Uh, is he medium? Uh, yeah. Then I'll throw the Fury of the Small on there as well. Uh, 8, 9, 10, 11. Got it. For stack. And if I go within 5 feet of him, it's a crit? Paralyze. Yep. Incapacitated. No action. Reaction. Move. Speak. Fail. Deck save. Strength saves. Grand advantage. Any hit, any hit is crit in 5 feet of him. Oh, nice. Okay. So I'll move to there. Pull out my rapier. You don't you have to. With your bow. You can shoot him with your bow. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's true. We can do that. I mean, your rapier might be better. I don't know. Ah, it's a sad grit. It's the saddest grit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You know Eight. what? We're going to uh, action surge. Okay. Do that again. Oh, that's better. Grit 14. And it, you can throw an extra thing on there anytime. Let me know. No, nah, not 14. Time. Okay. And, and 14 more. I finished them. Yay! Good old person. Finish your move where you want, and then the other mutate's turn. Our mutate has got a wisdom saving throw, which he does not make. But he's really got nowhere to hide. Mm -hmm. He goes running deeper into the chamber and cowers there. You guys can overpower him at your leisure, basically. He's just cowering and shaking in the corner behind the obelisk when you guys enter the chamber. But you have a friend who's lying dead in the remains of the um, the brain mass there. You want to do anything about that? All right, we can overpower the gem mule as well. Yeah, gotcha. Right. Uh, yes, uh, if if I've got the body and it looks like it's mostly there, yeah, uh, we will uh, cast a revivify. Okay, saving Calavon just before he goes past Death's door. Wow, well, turning to life with one hit point, Calavon. Mm -hmm. Whew! So that All was right, a tough so, fight. Uh, that was breaking intense. out the healer's kit. Uh, we'll start there. <laughs> Um, Everyone gets a healer kit. Here we go. Where is my healer's kit button at? Feet healer. Okay, we're going to start with Jeff. Jeff, that's going to be 14 hit uh, fourteen hit points back. Thank you, sir. Titus, 14 hit points back. Thank you. Caliphon, 14 hit points back. Thank you. Whoa, <laughs> who needs it the least? Uh, you get 16 hit points back. There we go. Then myself will get that's 15 hit points back. Kimball likes me best. Which I only need nine. All right, so that's five charges on the old healer's kit. You can also take a short rest here if you like. You can search the room. You find a netherese obelisk fragment. Weighs about 50 pounds. It's about a foot square. All jagged in shape, though. Um, I don't know that any of you can carry 50 pounds around with you, so you might need to secure it somewhere if you want to keep exploring. But while you're making uh, that decision, uh, go ahead and take a short rest. When... When do I... Let me look to see when I can do new infusions. Oh, no, it has to be after a long rest. Shoot. What are my infusions right now? 
Certainly somebody has a bag of holding. Ever somebody always has a bag of holding. But I guess I, not. Well, I can't remember if I have one or not. Um because I can't remember what my Oh, can I do a quick and healing outside of combat? I would think so. Right. Uses yeah. your key, right? Yeah. I thought I had infused my armor with because the only infusion I'm showing right now does anybody is anybody's weapons infused? I don't think I infused anybody else's stuff. No, you used to mine, yeah. but then I dropped out. You made me. Uh, you did me armor, Jeff. Uh... Okay, your armor. That's right. Your yeah. armor is infused. That's one of them. Then my wand is infused. I thought I infused my Loam's, own armor. Loam's okay. longbow is, I think. Oh, Loam's longbow. Okay, yep. those are the three. Very good. All right, never mind then. You can Loam replicate good. a bag of holding. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, but I've already used my three infusions. Yeah, uh, and I have to finish a long rest before I could change one of them. So unfortunately, there's nothing I can do there. Well, feel free to spend your hit dice for your short rest, everyone. How uh, how how heavy did you say it was, Tom? 50, 50 pounds, five zero. What happens if I add? You are wearing the boots of striding and springing, so you might be able to do it. What does heavily encumbered do? Nothing with the boots on. Oh, yeah, then I'll just I'll carry it. Yep. <laughs> those, those boots are, like, yeah. worthless unless you use encumbrance. <laughs> yeah, it's been great. Yep. <laughs> or you really like jumping. Or you, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, you're able to strap that thing on the gimbal. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, now you finish your short rest about an hour later. Where do you want to go next? You search the room. Stairs. You didn't find any other treasure besides the obelisk. Stairs down? Yep. Okay. Other. Okay. I moved you all down here for reference. So the stairs descend and descend and descend and finally emerge into a room with a couple of statues and four sarcophagi. The, um, the sarcophagi are standing upright against the walls. The statues depict dwarven warriors. Both the statues and the sarcophagi look badly cracked as if they could fall apart with just a touch. There is a hallway to the west. Do we dare disturb the sarcophagi? I mean, they're going to disturb us on the way out. Could be a hard pass on my part. Or we could just ignore them. Yeah, I, I think we'll ignore them for now. And uh, head for that passage, if everybody's in agreement. Maybe yeah. we just look at them? Sure, we can look at them. I'll stay here. Okay, you do a careful hope- look over the two statues and the four sarcophagi and without touching them or disturbing them in any way you don't see anything that could be secret or anything like that statues appear to be regular statues the sarcophagi appear to be regular sarcophagi that you could open although they're they could crumble apart if you try to open them oh, i can't right. resist i'm poking this one I'm trying to open it okay everyone put your guys where you want to be when loam does that when you're happy where you're standing roll initiative loam can't not touch I I didn't learn my lessons, and I shoulda. I shoulda. I wanted to be in the hallway. I didn't know that was an option. Okay. And then roll initiative if you haven't already. When you touch the uh, sarcophagus, loam, uh, you're pushed back as a dwarf bursts out of it. And at the same time as that dwarf bursts out of that sarcophagus, dwarfs burst out of the other three. These are undead. They look like their pictures there. Uh, zombie-ish in appearance, although not moving with the lethargy you normally see zombies moving with. These ones move with great speed and ferocity and vengeance and immediately fall upon you, the lot of you. So, another initiative. Okay, Jeff, you are first to react. Uh, okay. Bonus action hide. Ooh, not, gr- not horrible. And move up. I'll attack the one uh, northwest. Um, try to trip attack it. So it's a t- oh, actually, that's a crit, right? Because oh yeah, you had advantage, right? I was, um, I was hidden. Yeah, I hope. it does not have any blind side or nothing, so you were hidden. So um, it's fifteen, and five more is twenty. And yeah, try to uh, trip him. Sixteen strength save. Fourteen. You got him. Down he goes. All right, and then I'll attack with. Disadvantage. Why not? Yeah, 14 for 8. 14 hit. 8 for Sweet. magic piercing. Okay, mm-hmm. these things are okay. extremely skilled in combat. That hardly did anything to it. Uh, after you comes Loam. Oh, I'm sorry. That was Northwest. The one by Loam? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Go ahead, Loam. By the way, does anyone have anything that can uh, inflict uh, radiant damage? Just, um, just musing for no particular reason. 
Nope. Uh, Rome's gonna Loam's gonna drop the hunter's mark on the one that he's facing, and we're in big trouble if we can't do radiant damage. That is twenty six, dealing I think uh, fifteen points of damage. Uh, da, 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 da. With your long, I'm sorry, you're attacking with your longbow, the one where? Oh, sorry, wrong wrong button. I, I'm doing short sword. Okay. Oh, nice. There we go. See, that's how yeah. it's done. Fourteen. Uh, psychic, it resists, so that's going to be two more. So 14, 15, 16. The you hundred market? Yeah, I hundred market. So another four? Okay. Yep. And attacking again. Ten is a miss. And looks like a big old bad miss. Yeah, so these things are fighting you, you think, with more skill than any of you have. Even though you've yeah. got to jump on them, it's um, fighting unbelievably well. It's not in this fight. We're going to have to get out of here, guys. Yeah, back up or try to get out through the passage to the west. Okay, the northeast revenant the west. is the next one to go. Scott steps there to attack Titus. Actually, wait a second. Multi or you guys Titus. decide. I'll follow. Yeah, go west. All right. This thing takes a vengeful glare upon you, Titus. Uh, 15 wisdom save or you'll be paralyzed until he damages you or until the end of his next turn. When that ends, you're frightened. You make your save. Good job. All right. You ignore that, um, and that is all he does. Then the next revenant's going. The one on the ground by you, Loam. He looks up from the ground, gives you a vengeful glare. You see 15 wisdom saver paralyzed. Uh, I'm going to use my inspiration on this okay. this one. I've had a lot of good that did me. So you're paralyzed until the uh, end of his next turn. When that ends, you're frightened for a minute. Once you're frightened, you can repeat the save at the end of your turns with disadvantage if you see him. Couldn't put the frightened marker on your guy and paralyzed mark on your guy for now. That's all you can do, though. He stands up, does that. He is done. Then, Gimbal, your turn. Uh, Gimbal is going to drink one of his experimental elixirs, the one that alters self, uh, which both of them do, but he's going to drink one of them and uh, transform, change his appearance to a dwarf. Okay. Um specifically uh as close to one of the to the uh statue of the dwarven king from up above okay and then I he like is, and then he is going to hold the uh granite ledger up above his head and uh like slowly walk into the room okay and uh do they react in any way no attack yet and he's going to move to here no attack opportunity even. And then move to there. Uh, wow. And that is his, that is my turn. Okay. Then we got a revenant to the south here. Go ahead and glare at Caliphon. 15 wisdom save Caliphon or be paralyzed. Yep. Ooh, uh, just made it. Nicely done. Just made it. Nice. Then Caliphon, your turn. All right. Um, I am going to hit the one that's grounded with. Um, my talent. So fourteen. The one to the northwest. Oh, no, yeah, northwest for okay. uh, for eight. Fourteen is a hit. All right, and then I'm going to see if this works. I'm going to move. Uh, can I move through gimbal? Yeah. All right. I'm going to move to here, and I'm going to drag loam with down the hallway. Like it. So they don't. I don't know how it works. How they much don't get movement? An opportunity attack on me. <clears throat> how much movement did you have? So you're there. So it's one, two, three, four, five. Dragon, six, seven, eight, eight nine, ten, eleven. Right. Okay. Yeah. And before you go all the way down the hall, let me draw what you see in the hallway. In case that changes the holder. Yeah. Trask. <laughs> Trask probably. I'm good yeah. at this. You see a couple doors uh, on the north wall, and the hallway continues. Yeah. All right. That'll. Um... That'll, did I use my movement to drag him, or was that an action? It's your movement to drag him. Okay, then I will take a bonus action, spend a key point, patient defense. After you is the last of the revenants. Let's see, he will try to paralyze Titus with a vengeful glare. Get to wisdom save, Titus. Yep. Okay, going to put fear and paralyzation on you, guy. And then next to go is Titus. Uh, you're still paralyzed till the end of his next turn. Jeff, your turn. Okay, let me think here. I can't. What's the rules on dragging? I'm sure I don't have enough strength to drag. Uh, 
It's whatever the Titus. whatever it is. You probably can drag Titus. I don't think he's that heavy. All right. So who's here? That's ten, right? Because I'm going downstairs. Oh, also, right. oh, I forgot to notify you that uh, that one that you were fighting did regenerate too on the, on his turn. Yes. Okay, Jeff. I expect uh, any uh, you were here, right? So one, two, yeah. three, four, five, six. I'm just telling you how far you get. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. You could drag Titus that far if you with a double move. Okay. Up to you. You will provoke from that at least that one to the northwest, northeast on the way. You say I will. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, I, I bonus action disengaged. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. then you're gonna do that. I don't know. Drag him to there, and that's it for Jeff. And then Loam, your turn. So Loam, um, you're still paralyzed till the end of his turn. Okay, so this is your paralyzed round. Then. This one to the northeast is going to give chase to Jeff. Come to there, multi attack and Jeff. 17 Jeff for 11 bludgeoning. Yes, got an 18 with the. Uh... Plus, he's, plus he's vengeance target. So it's actually. Uh... Oh, you're an 18? Okay. I missed. Yeah. Second attack with his fist without one hit for 29 damage. 20 minutes. That's his turn. Then we got the one who paralyzed Loam. It's going to go here and finish off Jeff. 18, Jeff, for 28 yeah. damage. Yep. And I'm... I'll come to there and attack Caliphon, multi attack in the fist. Hit for 40 damage, Caliphon. Holy oh, shit. And oh, wait, I had patient defense. Uh, still would have hit patient defense, right? Uh, yep. And the second one, I think, still hits as well for 27 damage. Oh, I'm going to lay down. Dropped you down. He's done. Gimbal. Um, let's see. You have Titus is paralyzed. Loam is paralyzed, Caliphon's unconscious, and Jeff's unconscious. Loam is unparalyzed, right? At the end of his, his turn, turn you're just feared now, yes. I I look like a dwarf, but I cannot speak like a dwarf. Um, ah, shoot. Um, I'm going to, you know, still solemnly, I'm going to kind of mutter some stuff in some dwarven tongues that I've overheard in the past. Don't they stop or banyo? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Esta biblioteca. <laughs> um, and I am going to give um, Jeff one of uh, Gimbal's miracle elixirs uh, at uh, one of the extra powerful ones. Uh, so that's at a level two. So 15 hit points back to Jeff. Congrats. Uh, and Gimbal will kind of like admonish the uh, revenants to uh, be them at peace them. Finish your move where you Go, want. Go uh, rest them. Finish your move where you want, Gimbal. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay. The revenant south of Jeff will take Titus out with his multi attacking. Jeff, you're actually prone, I think, right? They knocked you out. So yeah. you're put a prone and you should guy. be pretending to be asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Pretend be dead. The attack on Titus is an auto crit because he's paralyzed. So that's 32, 42, 51, 61, 71. Nice. Knocked him out. Titus, you're dying and prone. And he's done. Caliphon, your turn. You're dying. So death save, Caliphon. Uh, One failure. Negative. And then the revenant that paralyzed Titus. Uh, well, actually, everyone's out except Loam. So speed of 30. Two, three, four, five, six comes there. Attacks Loam. Multi attack and first fist attack is a 19 for 16. Actually, that's um 41 bludgeoning. Second fist attack missed. Then Titus. Oh, is that all you got? Death save Titus. Ooh, Titus has two yeah. death save failures. So you're red two on Titus. That rounds over. Jeff, your turn. Okay, I'm thinking. Let's see. Oh, okay, well. pretend to be asleep. Maybe, or like, I don't know. I don't know how good your acting is, but if you could pretend to lay there and be dead, I honestly think at this point that our only strategy is to let them knock all of your asses unconscious and then hopefully go back to their eternal rests and then I can revive you. What do you want to do, Jeff? Okay. Um, and I'm sorry, Titus is down, right? Titus is at zero hit points and close to death. I, I could get Titus up on my turn. All right. Um, I'll play dead. Playing dead. Loam. What do you want to do? Ohm is going to uh, try the cowardice approach. He's going to do, um, as a bonus action, uh, Misty Step and teleport 30 feet, 10, 20, 
30, and then he's going to move... Out of you. Six. Okay. After Cow, after Loam, got a Revenant. Okay, we got no one left alive. And then another Revenant. That was a guy. That was one. And then Gimbal. Uh, I'm going to move up to here, and I am going to uh, give Titus... Uh, I'm going to use my healer's kit on him, since I think we're okay now. So that's 12 hit points to Titus. There. And then Caliph on death save. Don't roll one, buddy. One green light. That remnant goes there. And then Titus, you're conscious. Caliphon's dying. The remnants have all gone back into their sarcophagi. I'll, okay. I'll, uh, I'll hit Do Caliphon I get the impression the that if, if I move, that they'll see me? No, they've all closed the doors. All right. Well, then we will go ahead and do a uh, healing word on... Actually, no, we'll walk. Actually, I can't get there, so we'll healing word. Okay. Well played. <laughs> Except what? the whole. Oh, what is your definition of well played? <laughs> the encounter is over. <laughs> I knew that was going to be hard. I didn't know it was going to be that hard. There you go, California. That was eight. Thank you. Yep. I'm so. telling you right now. I'm telling you right now, the next campaign we play, I'm playing the tankiest <laughs> creature that'll never, ever, ever go down. <laughs> All right. Well, you probably don't want to do a short rest here. Where do you want to do, go to do another short rest? Uh, I will Lord. do. Well, I'll do a healer's kit on Caliphon. Okay. Um, so that's going to be 15 hit points back to Caliphon. A healer's kit on Jeff. That's going to be 14 back to Jeff. Healer's kit on Loam. Uh, that's 12 to Loam. So where we want to go, I guess, back to... So to, so to the west, you see a long hallway, dark. The south wall has an elaborate carving of a procession of dwarven priests carrying wrapped bodies toward the west. You hear far off the sound of splashing water echoing. Uh, that is it. Did we want to go take a short rest somewhere? Because Titus only has 12 hit points. Well, I guess, since I, you know, I'm not conscious and then any of these fights I'll, I'll use my uh uh i can use a spell to try to heal us up i'll i'll get down into the hallway at least i'll go ahead and conjure up my uh wildfire spirit away from people at least help out with the healing and you know this time when i get paralyzed in the first round of combat it'll be able to do stuff uh so let's see we'll go ahead and i'll use another third level slot and i will cast a uh aura vitality so i'll do the first one on myself uh, for 12. All right. The next one is I'll just do the 2d6s because that's what matters now. So the next one will be on Caliphon. That was three, but so you get four back. All right. Uh, the next one will be back on me. The next one will be on Caliphon. Sorry. Next one will be on me. That is a total of five. Five to go. Caliphon. Oh, I'm so sorry. Caliphon. The eight on me? That'll be a two on you and then the eight on you. Oh. Let's one. I lost. Count of three. Yep. Three to go. Uh, we will go one on me. Uh, we will go one on Caliphon. Nice. Uh, and then we'll do the last one on Loam. Thank you. All right. I can I can do one more of those, but I'm out of those for the day then. Well, we might want to save it. Yeah. I mean, uh, if, if we're going into fights like this, uh, I think I'd rather spend it now. It's not that useful in a fight. Yeah. Since, you know, as we've proven, I can't maintain concentration. Mm. Mm. Well, I can't maintain my feet, so don't feel bad. It's all right. Uh, I will hit myself. Don't do oh, that. I get an extra this. So that's one. And then we will go to Jeff. And then we will go to Jeff. So, Jeff, you should have a total of 12 from that one. And then Almost we will mad. go to Loam. That's number four. Uh, then we will go back to Caliphon, number five. Thank you. Then we will go to me for number six. Uh, then we will go to Loam, three. That is number seven. Uh, then we will go Caliphon. I don't need it. Oh, I called it. So you're full. Uh, Thank you. Then we will go to Loam for four. And then we will go... Oh, it's better than a poke in the eye. Oh, okay, yep, perfect. That's so bad. Okay. Well, where do you want to go now? Well, let's. I guess let's check, check this the door. Door, yeah. Okay. Um, Quietly. Go to move into positions you want to be in when you're looking 
to open that door. Getting furthest you can see down the hall. You got dark vision of 60. Okay, you can see down the hall to a third door. There. And as you're getting ready to open this first door, uh, Caliphon, you feel a creeping sensation along your scalp. Your feathers ruffle. It feels as if probing tentacles are seeking a weak spot in your skull. Make a perception check, Caliphon. My pleasure. Wisdom. Nice. Okay. Yes. You're just freaked out by it. You don't know what to do about it. You look around. You see no one. Uh, the feeling goes away. Do you want to open the door or do something different? Um, well, I'm a monk, right? Mm -hmm. So with monostatic, I don't know if that's really a word or not, but um, with traditions. So I'm like, I turn to the group and I'm like, this is uh, unhallowed ground. I, I, I have a feeling. Um, I don't know if we should go. And I squawk and then I just kind of open the door. Jeff, do you want to open the door or not? I will take his advice and not. Okay. Where to now? Well, well, hold on, guys. I mean, we are looking for obelisks and prisoners. At, at some point, we're going to have to probably explore everywhere to make sure yeah. we're not missing any obelisk shards and or prisoners. Right, but... So just, keep that, just keep that in mind. I'm just saying, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm but definitely we're probably gonna have to come know, back to it. Yeah. I mean same thing with the uh sarcophagi, like we could have moved we could have not opened them and then came back later. So in retrospect, that seems like it would have been the right decision. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you know, I, I think we should explore everything we can explore without getting into combat if we don't need to, and then Where to Jeff? You know, if we what door to, you want to open? Go to the next one. All right. Jeff, you feel the same strange sensation as you move down the hallway of something probing your skull, looking for weak spots. Make a perception check. Perception. Oh my goodness gracious. You don't know what's doing it. <laughs> Do you want to open that door or continue to go down the hall? I'll keep going down the hall. All right. You see another doorway down there, uh, right into your light. We see and then by the time you get down that doorway, you can hear the water more clearly to the west. You can see the edge of the water and a larger chamber there opening up at the end of the hallway. So when you get to there, Loam, you feel this same weird sensation of something crawling across your skull, probing at the weak spots. Make a perception check. <laughs> Bitch can't roll one. Bitch, uh, that seems unlikely, yeah. 14, that looks like. Um, it is in the Underdark. Oh, okay. So that'd be plus eight, so 17. Okay. So there is some sort of haunted, hauntedness to this place, and you feel like it's being driven by the sound of the dripping and splashing of water to the west. And if you could put that to silence, you could make this haunt go away. Interesting. Yeah. There's a faucet. There's a door there as well. Right. right. The splashing and, and watery sounds coming from the west are coming from this large chamber to the west, where, um, where you see that the room has collapsed basically into a big flooded pit. The dark water rippling and splashing strangely as though something lurks beneath it. Do not is there a the specific source of the splashing in the water? A it moves around, point? so something under the water is making it happen. But does that, sorry, does that tell us that it is, well, not safe, but like it was just our mind playing tricks on us? And we I could go like through these doors? Maybe. Okay. All right. That, that, that same, that same haunting continues and affects all of you. As you're uh, in this hallway discussing what to do, someone getting ready to cast a spell? Um, I'm thinking of putting silence on that pool. Oh, nice. We'll give that a go. See if okay. that helps. Okay. Yeah. The uh, the haunting goes away. No more feeling of tentacles trying to get into your skull. You well, see, see still, still see the water splashing stores. around, and then yeah, you see um, the silence has attracted or alerted something. And uh -huh. you see a creature like come out of the water. Um, yeah. Put this thing out of you. A watery elemental like creature splashes across the water. You can see in the dark shadows behind it something bigger moving toward you in the darkness, rising up out of the water. And as it comes that into sure view, weird. you see a multi headed Hydra. Hydra. Nice. Good good job, Lom. Good job. <laughs> Uh, you're kind of protected from it. It's too big to come down the hallway toward you, and it like submerges back down into the water. But you know, going that way might Let's be a little bit dangerous. 
doors and then think about some stealth maneuvers, but maybe we can circumvent it. So the first room you open up, you open that door up, and there is a table in the room and a basin. Um, the table is more, more of a stone slab than a table. It's got a few metal tools covered in dust upon it. The deep basin is standing next to it. The wall carvings, they show dwarves reverently tending to the dead. In fact, they are dressing um, and armoring a corpse. The basin holds several jumbles, uh, several jumbled pieces of armor here. In fact, looking at it, you think you could put together maybe a serviceable suit of plate armor. Mm. Uh, there's an opening to the east well, as well. Well, if anybody needs armor, that's not a thing that I think our party needs, but nice to see. Uh, let's go in and look around the corner here. You see another chamber? Uh, this one is similar, except the uh, place... Um, the wall carvings show the dwarves reverently placing sanctified gemstones within the corpse's chest. The basin is empty next to the uh, table. So that's the middle chamber. So gemstones into the chest in the middle chamber, armoring them in the western chamber. And then in the eastern chamber is them washing the bodies and stitching up the wounds. The basin there is empty except for a few pumice stones. What do you guys want to do now? All right. Well, who's got stone shapes? We can go through these walls. <laughs> Buddy. Who's got um, pass without trace? Oh, so our that. sneaky person can get by this uh, Hydra. I have a potion of invisibility as well that I'll donate. I feel like the vibrations might give you off. the. You might not have heard it, but the druids said that they have pass without trace on their staff. Oh. I guess going to do that and then move to the west. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah. You see two hallways when you move to the west, one extending to the uh, northeast and one extending to the north. Might be a little bit more risky to go to the northwest one and less risky to go to the northeast one since you can just kind of hug the wall for the northeast one. Uh, you might have to make a stealth check, which you could fail, especially versus seven hundred seven-headed monster, even with Pass Without Trace. So which way do you want to go? Go northeast. northeast. Jeff, you go northeast? Okay. The hallway to the northeast, it has, along its length, a couple doors you can see. In addition, uh, it's got grand carvings of mountain peaks above smaller carvings of multifaceted gemstones. And we're going to take a break here. 35 after, so let's come back at 45 after. Okay, I'm back. And you guys are all in this long hallway with a couple doors. Hallway seems to open at the end down there. And again, it's lined with carvings of mountain peaks and multifaceted gemstones. Where to, Jeff? Jeff, are you searching for traps? You're muted if you're talking. <laughs> the good news is you guys all have one obelisk fragment, so when you come to a break, you'll be able to just claim that victory. <laughs> Two more to go. That's right. On the verge is what I see it. While Jeff's working on his audio, uh, Calavon, where you want to go? I think the first one to the right. First door to the right, okay. I think Jeff said he was going to open it. First door to the right. <laughs> there is a gnome in here. About the same height as Gimbal. With his back mm. to you. He is looking at a lever that's protruding out of the wall there. He stands next to a simple sarcophagus. It's carved with an old male dwarf holding a quill and a book. The walls of this chamber are amazing. They are images all over the place of open books filled with cramped writing, all in dwarven text. The frail uh, gnome, his shoulders are bent with age. He's pondering the lever. He turns around. You can almost hear his bones creak as he does. He looks positively ancient. Um, and he says, well, hello there. My name is Riva Bedell. What is your name, Birdman? Uh, I am Califon. And these are my charismatic friends. Caliphon are you, are you friends. Real? I am real. Uh, but that's a good question. There are ghosts here. Yes. <laughs> to the north, he points down the hall to your right, Caliphon. I saw ghosts. I was a young man when I came in here. Not anymore. Wow. You've been here this whole time? No. I mean, I've been here a little bit. The ghosts oh, made like me the old. the first time. The ghosts, they did this to me. 
Oh, really? I was much, much younger when I entered the crypt. There was two of them, a pair of restless ghosts. Um, he looks at the walls here. I came here to study this text. He of the hidden gemstone. I've copied it here. He shows you a book. And the book is uh, very legible at the first half of it. But the last half is real shaky, real scribbly. Mm. Mm. So what are you doing here? Uh, we're on our own little adventure uh, looking for things. What um, things are you looking for? Uh, Netherese artifacts. Mm. Are you familiar with the Nether Netherese no. kingdom? No, I'm not. This place, however, could hold any number of things. Mind flayers invaded the crypt many generations ago, and who knows what they brought with them. Oh, wow. The whole place is haunted now from their uh, deprivations. I learned from this text that there's an enormous, exquisite emerald lying mm -hmm. somewhere in this complex. You don't think that's the thing you're looking for, do you? Maybe. Do you think that's what we're looking for? Uh, the thing else? you have now that definitely doesn't look like an emerald. It looks like a big black yeah. piece of onyx, oh. kind of. Yeah. 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 Find... I mean, yeah. No, uh, that's, that does not sound like what we're looking for. Oh, that's a relief. I didn't want to have to be at odds with you. <laughs> no, uh, we would we would never be at odds with a fellow gnome. I uh, say in my clanking voice. Well, maybe if I help you, you can help me. Of course. Are you well, looking for opportunities for investment? Uh, always. But first, I want to get a chip off of this massive emerald. It's likely hidden somewhere, maybe in some inner sanctum here, as befits Dumathoin's lore. You know, Dumathoin is the dwarven god of secrets. Uh, secret doors are common in all his holy places. Then he turns around and he points to the wall. He says, this lever here, this I think has something to do with revealing the hidden sanctum, but I can't get the lever to move. I've done enough tinkering, though, to realize that it must be tied to some sort of vast clockwork mechanism, and it must cause entire rooms in this crypt to shift. It's locked in place, I think, because it's connected to another lever somewhere else in the crypt. I'm convinced that we have to move them both at once. If you okay. explore, find another lever here, can you come back and maybe we can move them together? Yes. Okay. Be careful. There is a hydra and some sort of elemental in the pool to the south. There is a dangerous golem to the northwest. There are dwarven skeletons and dwarven ghosts to the north. Every direction is danger. Well, good thing we are... Accomplished adventurers used to f facing danger. Do you have any food I could borrow or have? Yeah, I don't eat. Hmm. Any of you, Birdman? Uh, Do you have any, sure. like, bird uh, seed or I, anything? I, I, no, I may have some food because I don't eat, but I probably had some. Let me look here. No, actually, I don't have any rations. Never mind. Uh, uh, Birdman, Titus, any well, bird seed or anything? Uh, sorry. Yes, I have three days' rations. I will <sighs> give you one and a half. Thank you. We will break. He ravenously eats it up. You may all make a wisdom insight check just in case you uh, are concerned about him. 23. Oh, You're 23. That, that he doesn't reveal normal. anything Thank abnormal. I think he's real, right? <clears throat> yeah, he is uh, corporal. That is for sure. What would you like to do now? I, I think we have to pick a path of evil. Which way, Caliphon? Um, I mean, there's the Hydra and the Elementals to the south. There's skeletons to the north. I think we have to go all the ways. Which way you want to go, Caliphon? I think we just work our way up. There's uh, a goal door? here. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You open the next door. Can you hear me now? Yeah. We hear you now. Yes. All right. Okay. The next room that you come to, this one, um, there are images of the Temple of Talhundareth adorning the walls of this crypt, reminding you of the dangerous fight you had with that brain creature up above. Mm. There is a sarcophagus here bearing the carved image of a dwarven woman wearing a large ring. Is it like an emerald ring? Mm. Is it a real ring or is it like a stone? Stone. Carving ring? It's carved stone. Do you guys want to search the sarcophagus, Loam? You want to you want to search the sarcophagus? Just shut the door behind Loam uh, when he does it. All right. As you step into the room, go ahead and put yeah, you guys like however you want to be standing. Enough. First of you might be about 15 feet into the room when something happens. Yeah, well, the ghosts. And I relay that I feel like he lost his... Uh, a lot of his life. Maybe he was drained. When you step into the room, a skeleton pushes open the sarcophagus lid and stands up, a dwarven skeleton, and grabs a weapon 
and advances on you to attack. Roll initiative. One of you has not rolled. Titus, roll initiative. Yep. Yep, one again. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay, Jeff. The skeleton is coming to attack Titus, and you go first. Okay. Um, bonus action hide. And move, let's see here, through Gimbal. Um, I'll attack it. Let's see what I get. Oh, nice. We will try to trip attack it, because I think it's probably immune to fear. So that is a crit for 9. 23? 23. Strength save for the trip attack. Nice. You do not trip it. Dang it. But and you well, take off almost a critical portion of the spinal cord, and it's barely hanging on. Well, let's try to finish it off. 23 for 9. It shatters or crumbles down onto the ground, bones uh, cracking and sliding across the ground. Yay. You see, uh, within its rib cage, a gemstone. Oh, Probably worth about 100 it? gold pieces. You see, lying on the floor of the sarcophagus, a ring. Um, the ring is um, gold, and it has a... I forget what this is called, but it's like a... It's got a face on the front of it, that's got black background and solid white bar relief face. I think there's a name for that. But. Cameo. cameo? So, that's it. Cameo. Not um, the man. <laughs> or the service that you can purchase. So that's all you see? Okay. Well, we'll grab that stuff. Okay. Search. Oh, super easy. Search the room. Okay. Searching yeah. the room. Um, that's all you find. Nothing else in the room. Did we search those no rooms doors. back in the... Uh... No, you did not. Yeah, let's go back and search those. Oh, no, we'd have to go by the... Never mind. Dang it. We we'd still have, have to go by the Hydra, going. but the Pass Without Trace is probably going. And we, in retrospect, I think we want to look for some secret doors. Yeah. Because mm, it's the temple of the Dwarven God of Secret Doors. Correct. So we'll Titus okay. will try searching this room. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, you guys okay. did search the room, and there's nothing in it. You're going to backtrack... Uh, Jeff, go to where are we going to go to? Let me know. So, we can try to go back to... Well, I we can see there's nothing there, so let's start with this room. Okay. Uh, you find a secret door there. Oh. In that room. Um, nothing else of value besides the secret door, though. You find a carving of a dwarven attendant placing their hand in the chest of a deceased priest, and you note that the hand can be depressed, and when you do, a door swings open. Aww. Okay. Well, let's, uh, before we move on to that room, or the secret door, can I search over here also? Yeah. Yep. There you go. There's that secret door. And then the last room over here, uh, nothing there. No secrets there. Okay. So, I guess we'll start here. We'll open that secret door. This small, empty room bears a heavy stone door opposite the entrance, and beyond the door is solid stone. Nothing past the door except solid stone. Oh. Okay. Weird. This must be a part of the moving entire rooms bit. So we have to go find that oh, lever. Yes. Where to now, Jeff? Uh, I guess. Can we check for secret doors in that diagonal passage? No. You have not. You want to search the passage? Let's do that. Okay. Back to the diagonal passage, search for secret doors, you find one. About the middle of the passage is a door right there. Again, into a small empty room. And when you open the door, a solid stone wall. Hmm. Yep. Interesting. Exactly. And you can see now, you're far enough down that passageway, you can see that there is uh, something looming in the room beyond, not moving at all, so probably a statue. Yeah, probably a statue, guys. 100% a statue. Haunted by ghosts. Mm -hmm. We well, said there was a golem to the northeast, skeletons to the north, and uh, uh, the hydra to the south. Clowns to the left of us yeah. and Joker's <laughs> feet. Now, I got a pretty good stealth, and I got these boots. And if um, Pass Without Trace is still up, I could try to sneak over to that north passage and see what's over there. I'm going to have to dare to open some of those doors by my reckoning, but seems like an okay strategy. Is the Pass Without Trace still up? Yeah. Last an hour. God. If you hear screams, come and get me, guys. I, I say we all go. Do a stealth. Live together, die alone. All right. Mm. All right. Make a stealth check, everyone. Number you're looking for is Boom. 16. Disadvantage. 
<laughs> my crit became a critical fail. No, no. Oh, um, oh. Caliphon, is that um, silence still going? I mean, not Caliphon, Loam. How long does that last? It lasts 10 minutes, which is probably not long enough. Probably gone. Let me, let me double check. You're right. It was 10. So get me your march order. Lead person probably just coming around the corner here. Uh, Gimbal's making some noise around here or here. Gimbal's yelling back to Riven, uh, Riven Bedell <laughs> about um, the many opportunities that Gimbal's Potion Emporium has. Uh, we've already have a couple silent partners in the venture, but always looking for more. Okay, roll initiative. The Hydra surfaces, the elemental thing surfaces. Uh, they're not super quick, though. And so, Loam, go ahead. Why don't we just retreat back into the hallway and continue exploring up here and not try to press our luck with the elemental and the hydra until we've finished exploring up here. Retreat or move forward, Loam? All right. Well, that advice, despite its source, and okay. uh, retreat <laughs> up this hallway. <laughs> if you all retreat, you'll just safely get away. Okay. You'll okay. Retreat. Despite its... We'll try that again later. So mm. now... Can you go to the end of the hall up to the north, up here? Yeah. I would like to ask the gnome before we go up there if he has any idea what the ghosts might need to um, settle their earthly affairs. He does not. He does not know what it would take to calm those ghosts. Okay. All right. So head on up the hall. At the end of the hallway, you see a statue in a room. Um, you see carvings in the walls, the north and the west and the south walls of dwarves battling giants and orcs and other enemies. The east wall is unadorned. There's a statue of a dwarf warrior, axe raised. There's words carved above the west doorway. They read in dwarvish. One of you speaks dwarvish, right? I do. I, I speak okay. gnomish, which is very close. It's dwarvish. Like, it's like Portuguese it. dwarvish. Portuguese right. dwarves. <laughs> All the Z's are J's. It says the valiant dead above the doorway to the west. And the door is just slightly ajar. Then there's also a door to the north. And the door to the north does not have any uh, any writing on it. I would check that east wall for uh, secret doors. If Let's circle the room, yeah, from turning right. Okay. But you lead person, just getting, to, lead person just getting to the wall. Everyone else where you want to be when that? happens uh, where am I at? as you're moving into the room you see a ghostly image of an elderly dwarf emerge from behind the statue you hadn't seen them as you were coming up the hallway uh they are in priestly vestments they wander around in shock gripping a battle axe stained with purple ichor the elderly dwarf ghostly in priestly vestments wandering around in shock gripping a battle axe stained with purple ichor Roll initiative. Remember, this place was raided by mind flayers, and that be the source of the Icor. Or is it Icor? I don't know. I think it's Icor, right? Okay. At the same time, as you see that, the door to the west bursts open, revealing a chamber beyond and a cadre of dwarven skeletons there. Skeletons just come rushing forward to attack. The ghostly figure continues to wander around, confused looking. Um, Titus and Jeff make perception checks, please. 21. Okay. Um, you believe this ghost is a haunt of this place and that defeating these skeletons that are rushing out to attack you would put it to rest. And Jeff, you act first. Okay. Um, well, I'll attack the one up front. I'll try to trip it. That's a 21 for 16. Not trip. Okay, and then I'll attack it. Ooh, broke something. Let's do another trip. 10. Four, 10. Destroyed it. I'm going to try to back down. Loam, your turn. And hide. Ooh. You muted it if you're talking. It's not there. There. I'm just going to move over there, and um, we're going to... Sp- There's Mark on the first one. Skeleton. You muted if you're talking. Still muted. Assuming the skeleton's. Yeah, I think, that, I think something's going on with Discord or something. The, Probably, uh, uh, Skeletons. Okay. So, Henry's Mark on the first one. Uh, 15 hits the first one. 11. They do take Psychic. 11, 12, 13, 14 damage with the first hit. 10 more with the second hit. 
24 total. All right, after Loam comes Skeletons. The first of them comes charging forward. There. Takes his battle axe to Titus. 20 to hit you, Titus. Ow. 10 slashing. And then your turn, Titus. All right. Uh, well, Titus is going to... We'll go ahead and bite this guy. That should bite him to the bone. Yep. 13 acid destroys him. We'll fall back to there. Bonus action. We will have the spirit come up. And uh, we'll flick a loogie at this first guy. Hit him for 21 seven. for seven. He'll Gimbal, your turn. Uh, okay, Gimbal is going to move one, two, three, four to here. And he's going to shake up Gimbal's caustic brew and point the flask at these two guys and let rip. For seven acid damage, 14 deck save to avoid. Seven at the start of their turn. Covering acid for duration, action to remove, 14 deck save to avoid. Um, both of them are covered in acid. <laughs> Green circle in their acid. I holler down to ribbon dip before. Keep you your finger. Keep your seller. finger in the keep your finger on the damage button for me. Califon, your turn. Um I feel like I don't want to block anybody. I'll move over here in case something triggers. And I will longbow um, bonus action doing my sharp uh, squawk of monic whatever i'm gonna shoot um 13 for 10 13 hit and um i will do 16 for um uh, and i will spend a key point and i will do 14 points that of too. damage it's one key point and i will do another longbow um 22, 4, 7. After you comes the skeletons. I will move back to... He takes 5 acid damage. 5 acid, thank you. To there. And battle axe on Gimbal. 20 Gimbal? Uh, yeah, that'll hit. 11 slashing. The ghost wanders around up here. I think Tasha's brew is concentration. Tasha's yeah, brew so. is concentration, yeah. But Gimbal keeps the stream flowing. Two more skeletons come into view from coming from the northern part of the room that you can't see. And Jeff, your turn. Okay. Uh, I got like a, a 13 I hid at the end of my last turn. 13 is good enough. Okay. So I will attack this uh, skeleton north of Gimbal. Ooh. Um, yeah. I'll precision attack it. So 22 for 12. 12. Got it. And then we'll attack it again. That was my last maneuver. 16 for 11. That's it. All right. Bonus action hide. Oh, your turn. Okay. The first one is a 13. That's a hit. Doing 12, 13, 14, 15 damage. The second one is a hit. Doing 12, 14 more damage. Finishing that guy. Then after Loam comes Skeletons. And then Titus. All right. Uh, Titus will move forward and produce some flames at this guy. Uh, 12? Produce flame. 12. Just missed. All right, and we'll bonus action have the flame seed Hakalugi. 17 for 8. 8. Took that one down. Gimbal, your turn. Uh, move there. Arm cannon. It's only going to be an 11 to hit. That's a miss. After Gimbal, Califon. Back here. Um, staying away. Repeat, rinse, repeat. Longbow with my... There it comes through. I will miss. I will take a second shot, which will be 24 for 12, and then I will move down here. All right, Skeleton's turn. Or come to their attack. Get Califon. Swing its battle axe missing, and then the ghost is wandering around. And then uh, two more skeletons show up, and then Jeff, your turn. Okay. Um, I hit at the last, uh, I don't remember what I got now. Ooh, wasn't great. 12 at the end of my last turn so i don't know if i'm hidden from it but i'll attack the uh skeleton attacking califon that's a hit uh, all right for 11 dropped it and then we'll move up and i'll attack the one coming through the door oh yeah for 14 i'll throw a fury of the small on there extra three so 17 got it Blow me turn more arrows Ooh, that's uh, enough to kill the first one second arrow Ooh, miss there we go. Titus, your turn. Titus steps up, and we will produce some more flame. 
Miss. A strong 11. Then we will flame seed. If 24 four. for four. I'm Indeed. contributing. Gimbal, your turn. All right. Uh, Gimbal's going to move down and fire bolt. 13 hit. It does. Seven fire damage. Got it. Ones. Then Caliphon. 14 hit. That dropped it. All right. So I think you guys are going to keep up. No chance of getting overwhelmed. You got uh, six more skeletons eventually come out of that chamber that you pepper with arrows and spells, mowing them down. You got this huge pile of bones there in the doorway when you're all done. Wow. Then after they're all destroyed, the ghost goes away. Okay. Uh, you note that those dwarven skeletons each had a gemstone in its rib cage, each of them worth probably 100 gold. Ooh. Thanks. It's gonna gonna pay back for bringing Caliphon. Back yeah, that's there. right. Now, do we think these are the skeletons that were depicted getting very similar? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, I want to search for secret wall doors on this eastern wall here. All right. Yeah, the eastern wall you think can definitely slide up into the ceiling. It's far too heavy to do it by brute force. There's gonna be some sort of mechanism that does it. Uh, but that mechanism is not in this room, as far as you can tell. Examine the statue. Anything notable about that that we uh, haven't discovered no. yet? No secret compartments or anything in the statue. That room with all the skeletons. All right. Former S skeletons. That room. Oh, wow. It's there. And within it, see um, stone slabs, each with an ind indentation where a dwarf warrior would rest. The walls are carved with images of valiant dwarven war priests smiting enemies with glowing axes and blasts of radiant fire. All right, let's pick a door. Which door, Jeff? In silent. Yeah. I, well, I th think we should. Do you want to do this door first? Yeah, let's check this door. Err. All right. Switch to my long sword. Okay. Oh, that's weird. Oh, there's a lever. Oh, okay. I see it now. Okay, in this chamber, you see um, three slabs with indentations for bodies. The central slab more ornate than the other two. You see armor scraps and brittle bones resting atop each slab. You see carvings showing a female dwarf leading other dwarves in battle. There's a metal lever built into the wall in the up, standing in the up position. Um, you see among the bones and armor scraps on the slabs some gems and a crown. On the central slab. Okay, do we want to go... What's the gnome's name again? Rivet uh, Bedell. Do we want to Rivet go tell him about this before we go in there? Or? Easy for you to say. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's look at these and whatnot. Crown. Okay. It's just a crown lying on the central slab. Exactly. Okay, as you start moving to the room, Loam, everyone gets you where you want to be after you get about 10 feet into the room. Once you're happy, roll initiative. A 30. I've got a 30. Nice initiative. Sweet. Materializing on the stone slabs are dwarven bodies. Ghostly dwarven bodies. They rise up, floating just above the slabs. Ghostly and attack. And the first of you to react to that is Jeff. Okay. Um, i move to here, I guess. And attack the northernmost one. One, I don't have any maneuvers left. But I crit again. That's like my third crit for fifteen. Got it. And then we'll attack again. <laughs> what? Nine more. Whoa! Nine more. <laughs> Jeff, you can have inspiration back. All right, nice. Okay, and then um, I'm gonna move back over this way and hide. Okay. That short bow view is magical at all. By the way. It is. It is. Okay. Good. Okay. After Jeff comes the first of the ghosts. The uh, the leader. The one on the central platform there, she comes into view of Gimbal and Loam. Uh, Titus can see her, Caliphon can see her, and she'll do horrifying visage. Uh, non ended creatures that see the ghost are frightened for a minute. 13 charisma save negates. If you fail by five or more, you're going to age 10 or yeah, 10 to 40 years. So that'd be Loam, Caliphon, Gimbal, and Titus. Uh, I will. Um do um who has not rolled yet <laughs> titus you haven't rolled yet right i, I haven't roll? rolled yet okay well i will do my um uh, i'm going to do my uh uh inspired 
um, or my flash of genius on you. So add a uh, three to the roll, to your roll. Hey, that makes it and your so, flash of genius. So as a uh, construct, can I age? Probably won't affect you very much now. All right. You certainly get case, like more crow crowded, and so yeah, you can't age. You can't age. Okay. Yeah. Well, then I'm going to use my inspiration. Okay. Well done. Looks like the only one to age is the bird man, Caliphon. My uh, my feathers got grayer. Caliphon, you age thirty years. Oh my god, how long? Wow. So let me Google how long Eric Coker lived. That's a good question. You've died every other oh, way. Shit. Might as well die at <laughs> <No>. age. <laughs> Okay, so you're frightened for a minute, so put the frightened mark on your guy. Um, oh, wait, you have to fail by five or more. <laughs> did you fail by five or more? Yeah, you did. Oh, yeah, yeah I got a three. Did. Okay. Uh, I probably, according, you should roll it twice. According to this, Eric Croker have a lifespan of 30 years. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that's what it, yeah, that's crazy. Uh, Please. <laughs> Caliphon, you can, you probably will be retiring Caliphon after this, or you can let him die right now, but he's going to be an old bird. After yeah. this adventure, if he doesn't get hit again. Um, okay, so that was that one's horrifying visage. Let's see. If you fail by five or more, repeat each of your turns after save or you're immune to this ghost's horrifying visage for 24 hours. Uh, greater restoration can reverse the aging within 24 hours um, if you're still alive. Um, <laughs> so, those of you who made the saves, keep a little notepad to your side that you are immune to the middle ghost's um, horrifying visage. That was that one, and then Loam, your turn. Uh, yuck, I do not like these. Um, Loam is going to step out of the room. Tell Rivabadel about that. He doesn't like him either. Well, first first he's going to shoot a couple arrows into the hurt one. Okay. One. 14. Uh, is... After moving his hunter's mark on it. Okay, 14's a hit for, let's see. Psychic. Psychic, they do... So it's going to be 12, 13, 18? 18 points of magic piercing and psychic. Got it. And one more shot. That finishes him. And then another hit. And then let's get out of here. Okay. After and Loam comes Titus. Avert my gaze. All right. Uh, Titus is going to... Uh, can I shoot over Nimble, uh, yeah. Gimbal's shoulder? Yep. Then we'll, we'll go ahead and fire over uh, Gimbal's shoulder. No, I'm surely going to roll above a four on a Bruce Flame tonight, right? Yeah. Hey! So that'll be for 15 points of fire. Fire! Resist that, so take seven. Of course. And then we'll move back a little bit. And then what we'll do is we will bonus action send my guy in uh, to there, and we will fire a teleport at both of them. Next saves. Ale, make it. Seven fire does three to him. I took the first two for reference. I don't know why it rolled four times. <clears throat> End turns. Okay. After Titus comes Gimbal. Uh, so Gimbal is going to drop a vial of acid into his arm cannon and shoot it at the central ghost. Okay. No assassin. Uh, I am going to... Hold on. Uh, uh, don't tell me if a 15 hit, unless I would have already known that it does. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and still do the same way. It's just be on the safe side. Uh... I'm going to do built for success and add a D4 to that. That would make sure it hits. Okay. So you that's going to be 16. You hit doing 12 points of acid damage. You can add your intelligence modifier to one of the damage rolls. You want to add it now? Uh, yes. So your intelligence modifier is a uh, three? Plus three, I believe. Yeah. Okay. So that's 15. So it takes seven acid. Uh, ah. Got it. I was hoping that acid would do full. Okay. Um, then I am going to move out of the way. Am I right? Is Mel Sassadero not concentration? Yeah, Acidero is not concentration because hmm. it's just acid. Makes like, it better sitting stuff. There to him. Yeah. Okay, after Caliphon comes uh, Grandfather Caliphon. <laughs> I, will, uh, I will move out of the room to buy loam and then I will remove the frightened effect. Oh, okay. Nicely done. Okay. Uh, and uh, that was my action, my bonus action. Was that a, did that cost a key point? No. N no, so I will bonus action, patient defense. Okay. We got the second ghost. Grant. He would come around and do a withering touch on the fire thing, critting him. Ow. 40 necrotic. It's dead. Ouch. 
And that goes to stun. That round is over. Jeff, your turn. How many, times, how many times has Caliphon died? Actually, like, died, died in this campaign? Twice oh. now, for sure. Maybe three times. Yeah. He died. At least two that I've brought you back from. Yeah. yeah. It's been three, at least. Yeah, the yeah. Red Wizard killed him once. I, I remember that. Uh, and then Titus, I think, revivified him twice. Yeah. And now so. he's, a, he's dying of old age. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay uh i got a 24 on my hide last okay that's good enough and then i'm gonna attack the one to the north uh 23 for nine got it and let's do that again Ooh, uh, 18 for 10 got it and then should i close the door we gotta finish them all right then i'm but gonna move. sure yeah i'll close the door okay Door is closed. And mm. we'll come out of initiative now. You guys oh, can do I, what you like. Why would we come out of initiative? I would be just going right back and opening the door to shoot him on my turn. Okay. All right. Then we won't. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. The ghost. I will bonus action hide. We got to clear those ghosts out because we need to get to that lever. Correct. Lone, yeah, I was, yeah. I was just thinking we could gain a round by the door. Your turn, Lone. Okay. Is the door closed? It is. Okay, well, I'm going to go and open the door and okay. shoot Hold myself at the ghost. Ready. Hold there, I got ready to action to go. So the ghost there north of the door will... Uh, well, actually, can't do it on you, because I think you're immune. I he am will, immune. He will try, and right now I think the only one who can see him is you. And is this the same ghost? That's the middle one that... Middle one? Uh, yeah, the people okay. that we are immune to. Okay, go Can't ahead, Don't spook me anymore. Take that. Ooh, that's a hit. And finished him. And then I'll shoot the other one. Ten is a miss. And that looks like a big fat miss. And then I'll back out of the way, because I'm spooked by that remaining <laughs> ghost. Hi, this your turn. Come up to the door and toss. Yep, that's a four. Thirteen. Thirteen hit. Sixteen fire does eight. Fourteen. Uh, no, just ten. My guy oh, is Oh, your guy's gone. Okay, so in. three back. Um, All right. Gimble. Uh, well, no, ten fire. Oh yeah, five fire. Five fire. Yeah. Gibble move to there and shoot with a fire bolt. Okay. Uh, twenty-one for twenty-two. Twenty-one is a nice. hit. Oh, twenty-two does eleven. So. Okay. And Caliphon, your turn. I'd uh, drop my longsword if I hadn't dropped it in the room. Uh, pick up my longbow. I think I can stay exact where I'm standing and fire. Uh, 16 for 16. That is a hit. And a 23. I will spend a key point because I'm angry and hurt and my joints are hurting. And I will do 13 points. Okay, the ghost is coming out, rushing towards Caliphon. Caliphon, struggling to draw his bow, loses an arrow and destroys the ghost. What? Yay. All is quiet again. That calf, Cathalon, Caliphon was a goner for sure. <laughs> oh. I think everyone did. So Caliphon, uh, you can keep adventuring, but you're going to need like a greater restoration to keep going for for long if you can get one. I don't know that you can get one here. You guys do need to get a, get that obelisk out of here, um, so you could do that and then come back and explore further or keep exploring now a little bit more. And that's up to you, of course. Titus you also have the crown in the room above and the levers how, to how pull. Does, how does revivify work on somebody who dies from uh, magical old age? In a word, it doesn't. <laughs> well, yeah. that sucks for Caliphon. Caliphon needs a greater restoration to keep adventuring past this adventure. <laughs> well, we need to get Caliphon out of here. And Are we even within a day's ride of town? Um, not really. Is that what it takes one day? Well, I mean... Because I can't cast it, it's a fifth level spell. Right, yeah. Yeah, you said something about 24 hours or something, I thought. Yeah, The so, you know, I guess we just go kill monsters and hope they don't kill us, and, you know, maybe I can level up two times before tomorrow? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I probably won't. Where's, where's, I need, a, I need to go plan. find a, uh, a pasture of sheep. Right. <sighs> okay, uh, do you want to try and get out of here, or do you want to press forward? I don't know that. I mean, I think to the point, if we're over a day away from a town, anyways, 
I think we just make Califon as comfortable as possible. <laughs> tell him, you know, some stories about his life. You know, isn't that, what you, with, you is that what you do with all of our L's characters? Just make them as comfortable that's, as you can. That's right. If they pass away, because this hasn't just been Califon. I like to bring that up. So. Okay, where to now? Back to the gnome dude. Or search that room, first of all. Search the north room? Okay. Yeah. The north room. There's a crown. Yeah, there's a crown. There are three gemstones lying on the three different um, platforms. The crown is an attuned magic item, so you could identify it or wait about an hour for a short rest to figure out. Basically, you have to do a long rest now to figure out what the crown does exactly. So you gather those things. Was the crown found on on one of those slabs? Is it the center slab? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now you got the two levers. Uh, Let's arrange to have them pulled. Riva Bedell says he's happy to pull this one if you guys want to pull that one. You bet. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. So put you guys where you want to be when you pull those levers. Oh, geez. Uh... And I'll assume you have the door to Riva Bedell open and the door to the room with the three plinths open. Uh, right. Yes. Um. Uh, geez. I don't know. I guess. Who will pull the north right. lever? Oh, I mean, what's he gonna do? Age me? <laughs> <laughs> Califon. The two old men. The two old ones. <laughs> the two ger- The geriatric <laughs> pull. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're both like pulling with all their might. And the levers don't move. <laughs> finally, finally, they break loose. Okay, everyone happy where they're at? Yeah. Okay. When you pull those two levers, there's a uh, resounding grinding sound as something enormous moving, coming like from the wall to your guys' southeast or inside the rock to your guys' southeast. At the same time as that happens, um, the the block that's here by you, Loam, lifts up into the ceiling. And as it does, it reveals a chamber beyond. And in that chamber, you see... Oh. By the way, I could have ritually cast Identify on that crown. Okay, well, you can do that after this encounter. No, that's fine. I, I just realized that I have, I have that spell. <laughs> okay. Um, alcoves, each containing a sarcophagus with a lid carved to depict a pious dwarven priest, are in that chamber to the east. There's a dim radiance emanating from each carving. Slumped in the room's center are armored skeletons. Um... These ones remind you not of the skeletons you've been killing here, but of the ones that guarded the entrance to the tomb. Uh, I'll put them on the map here for you, even though they're not animated. At least you'll know where they're at. Three slump skeletons there. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah. So to be clear, these are like those revenants? They're like the revenants that were guarding the entrance. Oh, okay. So there you are. Oh, and the grinding noise that you heard uh, stops. So something inside the wall... To your south loam was grinding and making an enormous amount of vibration and as well as the big slab which is raised up into the ceiling and then all we that comes to, to a stop those secret doors with the doors to the block yeah. walls okay uh which one you want to go to closest okay um when you go to that door you find and when you open it there is a chamber on the other side now and unfortunately, I don't have like a version of this with the chamber rotated in the right position. Uh, so you just have to imagine it's in the right position to be making connections. So Loam comes to this door here. You guys can all get by behind Loam. And this little nook here connects to that door. This little nook here connects right, to the yeah. secret door you found below. And this little nook here connects to this door right here that you haven't been through. And in the chamber... You see alcoves with exits, each supported by stone pillars and lintels to resemble a mine entrance. A dais with a pedestal that holds an enormous multifaceted emerald that glows with warm green light. Um, that's all you see in the room. River Bedell is looking over your shoulder or between your legs, taps you, gimbal on the on the armor, and says, "That's it. Can you get me? A, can you get me a a little?" Uh, piece of that a little sliver of that gem well uh let's talk about uh your initial investment into gimbal's potion emporium okay uh, so those two gnomes get into a long-winded discussion while they're doing that what do you guys want to do let's all go to the door well, well take a look at the uh 
Emerald okay. uh, on its uh, little platform there first. All right. Put you guys all where you want to be when you step that 10 feet into the room. So just 10 feet past the door into the room. And when you do that, three ghostly figures manifest and attack. Mm. Picture these bad boys here. That's what you're facing now. Whoa. Roll initiative. Yes, third one on initiative for the night. Okay. One of them manifests and attacks Loam with a life drain. Loam. Only a 12 to hit you, though. So you dodge out of the way of its deadly cold touch. And then, Jeff, you react Considering first. the 36 damage. Uh, yeah. Um, bonus action hide. Ooh, not great. Move down to here. I'll attack the one uh, to the east of Loam. Ooh. 15 for 8. 15 to the east of Loam is a hit. 8 points of magic piercing. Hurts it. Cool. Try that again. 22 for 8. Another 8. Hurting it more. Then Loam, you turn. Loam has a dilemma because he needs to use his bow to attack these guys. So I am going to disengage. Gimbal, your turn. All right. Gimbal will um, set off a uh, rivet. Tell Rivet Biddle this is yet another one of Gimbal's Potion Emporium's uh, amazing creations. And he'll set off a uh, Gimbal's Pixie Powder, Powder Party Popper um, uh, getting the three wraiths, hopefully. Very fire. 14 deck saves. One, two, three. Fail, make it fail. It. So, advantage Not to attack bad. the ones with purple. And then Gimbal will move up here. And explain to River Bidel how River, the River Bidel uh, moves with you. Okay, how uh, the pixie powder party poppers work. Grandpa Califon, your turn. <laughs> <laughs> I will uh, step in. I uh, will long sword two handed. Twenty three for ten. Um, uh, Twenty five for. I'll throw on another key point. For 20, and then I will... What's the key point that you're doing? Key field uh, attack? N- no, it's the death, it's death strike. Once each turn, when you hit a target with a Kensei weapon, you spend one key point to cause a weapon to deal 1d6 extra damage to the target. Got it. Okay, so six more. Got it. Um, I'm down to two key points, by the way. And then I will Talon. Uh, 23 for six. And I'm stuck in this room, aren't I? Okay, the wraith you just attacked, Califon, goes next and attacks you with a life drain. As it should. Hit for 24 necrotic. Uh, that hits. 14 con save, or else your max hit points will re- be reduced by 24 as well. Awesome. Is that a con? Yeah. Con save. Uh, I'll do, I'll give you flash, uh, or a flash of genius. No, I can't. Never mind. It's too late. You. you can't see him, yeah. Okay, uh, that one's done. Then the next wraith near Loam. Step there and attack Loam. Life drain. 21 for 26 necrotic Loam. Yep. And a con save DC 14, or lose that off your max, too. Nope. So I'll do that for you. 45 out of losing 26 off a of 74. B40, 30, 38. Is that right? I think it's... No. I'm sorry. What did I just do? Was, you, was your max 74? Yeah. So it should be 48, not 38. 48, okay. Uh, save that. And then... Hi, it's your turn. All right, did that guy move back from Loam? Yeah. Or no, he didn't move back away. He's right there. Okay, well, all right, uh, we will go ahead and... Are these guys all on the ground-ish? Uh, yeah, close enough. Close enough, and then uh, how tall is the ceiling? Uh, the ceiling's about 12 feet tall. All right, well, then we will go ahead and uh, we will conjure our spirit and put him right in the middle so that it gets all the bad guys and none of the uh, good guys. So right above the emerald. 12 fire, 12 deck saves. Boxcars, 15 though. deck saves. One, two, three. Uh, the last one failed. It took 12 fire. Ooh, that was the wounded one, too. That's good. Uh, 12 there fire, actually. Go. They probably resist that, so six fire. All right, and then uh, we will just have it... Uh, well, that's my action. The bonus action, I will tell it to spit at the one that's not looking so hot, and I am going to move around the corner to let Jeff have a nice clear shot as we do a disadvantage shot on the one by California. That's a hit. Hey, for there two you go. Fire. For, for two. 
After so Titus, close. the Wraith to the northwest will attack the Fire Elemental next to him. Life Drain, hitting for 26 Necrotic. 14 Con save or max reduces the same amount. That uh, sure. doesn't really matter, does it? Much. Yeah, yeah, he fails. So he's 14 out of 14. The Wraith is done. Jeff, your turn. Okay. Uh, bonus action, hide. 5, 10... I can go there, right? Because yes, actually, yeah. yeah. Okay. There's actually the hallways are actually lined up with the doors, so pretend like the hallways aren't where they're shown. Yeah. Okay. So then I will attack the south one, hopefully with advantage. That doesn't. That's a hit. Twenty-eight for eleven. Eleven take finished them. Um... Okay. Then I'll attack the one on loam. Hit for nine. You. And all action surge. Do that again. Hit for eight more. And hit for 11. And then back up. Okay, low meter. Okay, I am going to misty step here. I'm going to shoot arrow, two arrows at the one that was next to me moments ago. I'm going to miss the first arrow. No, you have advantage. So I'm going to. So the first one Wait, hit. Oh, yes, because it's glowing. No hunter's mark, is that right? Um, No, I lost concentration. No on psychic, that. so that is 18. No psychic resistance. The second hit on the same guy is going to do 10 more. Okay, got it. And then I'm going to get into the hallway with the rest of the uh, Gimbal, cowards. your turn. All right, Gimbal will move down to here, and he will uh, firebolt the one who's almost dead, or, you know, dead again, uh, critting for wow. uh, 25 fire damage. It does 22, which kills it. I mean, allowed. C25 does 12, which kills it. Okay. <laughs> After Gimbal, Califon. Ming, like a banshee, I'll run over here and um, I will strike with my two handed longsword for a whopping. 12 is a miss. 12. Um, 16. Would have... 16, 16 hit. All right. Uh, can't take it with you. And it doesn't look like I'm going to be around long. So I'm going to add another D6. So 19 of magical. Uh, slashing damage, and then I will take it with my talent in the shin. Hit again for four more. Four more, and I will scream like a little bird. Your turn, Titus. All right, uh, Titus is going to uh, pop in, and will produce a flame. You know what? We will. You know, we'll, we'll pop it up a little bit. We will scorching ray. Nice. Second level, because that's all I've got. Okay. We will put the first, uh, the D8 on the first one that I hit with. Okay. That's a hit. Which should be that one. For nine. So for nine. For it becomes four. Got it. Uh, second. That hit. For four more. For four. And that hit. And for three more. Yeah. Then we will do a bonus action to, uh, I will move back. We'll have the bonus action do a, uh, straight roll with the flame seed. And we will be done after I move back. Gimbal's Pixie Howdy. Turn. That's a miss. That rounds over the Wraith's turn. Attacking the Fire Spirit. The Life Drain. Only, hey, it missed! Only a 12. That's missed a miss. Missed by what? Jeff, your turn. Um, should be able to hit it from there. Oh my goodness gracious, dude. What is that? Number 5? Yeah. Crit? Uh, 14? Yeah, for 14. And do it again. Hit again for 7. 29. 7. Loam, okay. your turn. Hey, well, Loam... Steps up and is going to finish it with arrows. I'll cast uh, Hunter's Mark again. Then I'll fire two arrows Eight, at the thing. Nine. Twenty. Twelve. Finished it. Four. Twelve. Destroyed it. The last of the wraiths. And now you can chip off a piece of that uh, gemstone. It appears there's no way for you to get the gemstone loose, though. Uh, all you can do is chip off pieces of it. Okay. So you do that. You get some uh, pieces of the gemstone. You got doorway, a doorway out to the east you've never been through. Yep. Let's form up and open that door. Beyond that doorway is a short hallway uh, with the backside of a secret door beyond it. And then past that is a hallway. So that location goes to this door, which goes to the backside of that secret door. There's a hallway Makes with sense. a... Riding above both the doors on the ends of it, the one to the north says, the blessed dead. The one to the east says, the digging dead. And in the hallway itself, 
um, are grand carvings of mountain peaks above smaller carvings of multifaceted gemstones. And um, there's a haunt here as well. Yeah, when you first step into that hallway, you have the nagging sensation that mind flayers are currently invading your home, Loam. Just a, just a deep-seated gut of your stomach feeling that that's happening. You don't know what you would have to do to quell it. Which, okay. which way do you guys want to head? Let's try the door in the middle of the hall. Right. The one that doesn't have any dead. No writing on it, yeah. Past that doorway is a chain with a sarcophagus in it. And other than the sarcophagus, you see uh, architectural designs carved into the walls, showing the chambers and passages of the crypt. There's a statue of a glowering dwarf standing protectively over a sarcophagus with a cracked lid. So looking at the, the walls, you can see, if you zoom out, basically all the crypt you've been to. In addition, I'll draw there as you haven't been to, but remember you haven't been there yet, so just because you can see them, you might still want to explore them at some point. So to the west, you see a couple of chambers uh, with more dead and sarcophagi. And to the east, you see one remaining chamber that you haven't been to through those double doors. You see all the secret doors marked, but you've already found them all. Um, yeah. And... Wait, why do we see all this stuff? It's on the walls of this room. There's oh, arch okay. architectural designs on the walls. And you see that when you step into the room uh, to there. Everyone else go and put you guys where you'll be as you're walking into the room. Do you want to search anything else in the room there, Lom? I don't think so. I'm bothered that we haven't found any obelisk pieces yet. Well, it looks like there might be something in that wagon or whatever that is. So as you're, just get, as you're just getting ready to turn around and leave, the sarcophagus opens and a mummy wrapped in architectural plans steps forward. <laughs> That's awesome. And as the mummy steps forward, the statue behind the mummy comes to life. Roll initiative. Okay. Jeff, you're first to go. Okay. Um, well, nice. Um, I will attack the... So what is the statue? The statue what? is of a... Uh, Glowering dwarf standing protectively over the mummy now. Jeez, I guess I'll attack the mummy. 23 for 12. 23 is a hit for 12. Uh, magic piercing. Um, it does 6 to the mummy and also 6 to its guardian. Oh. And 16 for 12 to the mummy? Uh, 16 is also a hit. Another 6 to the mummy and 6 to the guardian. Oh, After Jeff, think. Califon, your turn. I will run up here a long sword i will uh 19 hit for for five five does two to the mummy three to the i will do eight for ten miss and i will tell on him hoping to scrape off his architectural plans <laughs> i nice i will never mind i can't add the d6 so i will do six points of damage um, to him, um, or her, to they, uh, and I will run back to the corner. Okay. One, two, three. After yep. Califon, Titus, your turn. All right. Uh, Titus is going to move Gable Square, and we are going to see a mummy and hope that we can set it on fire. And we will use a second level slot to conjure up a uh, rolling ball of fire. Nice. Uh, I there's something. We will go right there, and we will slam it into the mummy. Ooh. Okay. Um. Fifteen deck save for half. Fails it. It's for vulnerable 15. to fire, so it's going to take twenty-two fire damage. Uh, it will take twenty. Oh. Or I'm sorry. It'll take thirty. Thirty fire damage. Um. So it's going to take fifteen and fifteen. To the and then we will use a bonus action to have the fire spirit fly in and it will spit a loogie at our friend 14. That's a hit for, for 18 nine. fire. Nine to the mummy and to the guardian. And uh, it will fly over Gimbal's head. End of turn. The guardian charges forward there and multi attack with a fist on loam. 24 to hit you loam for 13 bludgeoning and then missed you. And then Gimbal, your turn. Uh, Gimbal is going to firebolt the mummy. You guys are mean. Mean to the poor mummy. That's 20 a 24, uh, 11. 22 fire. fire damage, so 11 to the mummy, 11 to the guardian. 
<laughs> and then the mummy's turn. Back up. Rushes forward, aflamed and crazed with anger, does a dreadful glare at Titus. Uh, it'll frighten you. 11 wisdom save will negate. If you fail by five or more, you'll be paralyzed instead. No problem. You make it. And a rotting Whew. fist attack. Only a 12 to hit. Whew. And then Loam, your turn. Okay, well, Loam is going to let that mummy have it. Put the hunter's mark on the mummy and try and skewer it with a short sword attack. Ooh, that hit by a mile. That is 24 for 11. That'll do 5 to him and 6 to him. And then you finish the mummy. And when you do, the statue ceases functioning. Good job. You find in the tattered, burned remnants of the mummy, uh, hidden in its torso, a gemstone worth 500 gold. Nice. Diamond. Okay, now where to? Oh, do you want to search the room? Yes. Okay, of find course. nothing else. Now where to? I'd like to take a hammer and start crushing the gem down into a diet. <laughs> the uh, double doors? <laughs> Diamond pieces. So, Go through yeah, the double doors to the south. Double doors to the south? Okay. Through the double doors to the south, you see the room depicted there. Uh, the walls... Uh, the east wall has four carvings, and the west wall has three carvings of dwarven miners hard at work. A mining cart holds a large chunk of black stone about a foot long. It is the second piece of the obelisk you're looking for. Yay! Yay! Yay. Well, what's going to happen when we grab it? Sure, nothing bad. Uh, we're all going to die. Let's find out. Let me grab it. Okay, put you guys all where you want to be when Calavon, Grandpa Calavon grabs the, Grandpa. the shard. Oh my god, you... All right. Once you're happy where you're standing, roll initiative, because... As soon as you grab the shard, Caliphon, specters step out of these wall carvings on the north or the east wall and the west wall. Of course they do. So roll an initiative. Is it also 50 pounds? Caliphon, you're first to go. Is the the shard 50 pounds It is 50 pounds, yeah. Would that make, I mean, how much do I have until I'm encumbered? Not any. Probably really close. You can grab it and move at half speed away, though. All right. I will, um, I will dash. Okay. So move uh, 11 squares. Six, seven. See you guys later. Calvin goes running out of the room. The seven specters give chase. Speed up. It's like Roadrunner. Like little, like, feathers are, like, trailing behind me. It's to there and attacks uh, Calvin. Or Gimbal, I mean, with a life drain. Gimbal, 15's miss. And then Titus, your turn. Looking around the room, Titus, you don't see anything else in the room of any note. All right, well, we'll go ahead and uh, leave some parting shots. Uh, we'll do a produce flame. Oh, nice shot. Right, right there. Hey, finally! <laughs> Look at that. That's a, a lot. It's a lot of damage. He resists it. 11, 36. 36, so 18. So it's like a normal hit. 18 damage. <laughs> and then uh, in order to assist with this endeavor, we will use our move action to get out of the room, and we will spend our bonus and... Just enough movement. Nice. To fiery teleport. Oh, nice. And uh, Loam and Gimbal, you can move 15 feet. That's awesome. That's oh. the end of our turns. Okay. Another se- Spectre given chase. They move with quite a bit of speed. One, two, three, four, five, six. Attacking Gimbal with life drain. Missing. And then Jeff, your turn. Um, I want to attack the wounded one. 19 for 10. Wounded one, 19 is a hit, 10 finished him. All right. Then we'll attack the uh, other one to the west of that one. 28, 4, 7. Yeah, get out. Another specter given chase. One section high. There, attacking Gimbal. Life drain. That's a hit on your Gimbal. Uh, nine necrotic and a 10 con saver. Your max will be reduced by nine as well. All right. I'm going to use Flack of Genius on this. Okay. Because I am impressed by my own genius. And I'm glad I did. Very good. Okay, after it's turn, Loam, your turn. Hey, I'm going to disengage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. After your turn, Gimbal, your turn. Uh, Yeah, I'm going to disengage. One, two, three, four. Okay, slam the, the door shut. shut the door. All yeah. right, you guys are out. You did it. Bye, spirit. Now, the only <laughs> question is, do you want to explore that western wing? And try uh, and kill the uh, Hydra. I don't, oh, and the, I don't really want to kill the Hydra, but I feel yeah, like just to face a golem. And to recap, you have found now two of the shards. You think you know the way down to Gibbet's Crossing, 
being these descending set of stairs there. You could retreat from here and try and get to civilization in time to save Caliphon. It probably won't be successful. <laughs> Caliphon will die peacefully in his sleep somewhere along the road. Well, we have to try. We gotta try, yeah. yeah. We gotta try. And then you can also secure the two shards somewhere so you don't have to carry them with you. And That's you can go up a level. level. Okay, oh, so what's true. it going to be? Do you want to go after that golem or no? Not really, guys. Okay. No, no. Okay, let's look at... Uh, yeah, so you guys get out of here safely. Try to get back in ta town in time to save Caliphon. I'll leave it up to you if you want Caliphon to continue on as an old, old man. Or bring in a replacement uh, next time we play. But next time we play, you guys can be 8th level. And the treasure that you found... Um, yeah. You found the Mind Guard Crown. This is an adamantine crown that when you wear it, you have advantage on intelligence save, wisdom save, and charisma saves, and you resist psych psychic damage. It's a very wow. rare permanent attuned item. And you have the Ring of the Orator, a brass ring with a dwarven head silhouette or cameo. Uh, action to project your voice to be heard clearly by all in a mile, regardless of intervening noise, for a minute. Magic silence, a uh, foot of stone, inch of metal, ten sheet of lead, or three feet of wood blocks it. And you can even force creatures that you can see to understand what you say. So that's kind of cool. And then uh, you got a whole bunch of gemstones, so I'll split that treasure up for you. But if you want either one of those two items, roll a d20. You're going to be 8th level, so you can have four permanents. So if you're already at four, you'll have to give one up to grab one of those two. But that's okay. You can do that. And then others can pick up what you give up. <laughs> I do not want it. <laughs> Gim Gimble thinks they can make a better one. Okay, Jeff, do you want either one of those two? I do. I have to think about what I'm going to drop. I guess I'll drop the Gloves of Thievery. Would anyone like Gloves of Thievery? Jeff, hit that button so they can see what those do. Well, um, specifically, Loam, would you like Gloves of Thievery? You're taking the crown, right, Jeff? Taking the crown, yeah. Or the Ring of the Orator? The crown. I, I was talking to... Oh. You want the gloves of thievery or the ring of the orator, Loam? Uh, the gloves of thievery. Loam will take the gloves. And Loam, do you have four items or only three right now? Uh, I only have three now. I'll be up to four. I think you have four, three. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, I've the breastplate, the braces, bracers, archery, and dagger, venom, rod. and a movable rod. So you have four right now. Oh, okay. Well, then, none of those things is more fun than what I've got. So I'll stick with what I've got. Okay, Titus, you want to... Gloves or a ring? Um, I will abstain. Gimbal. <clears throat> Jimbo. Gimbal. Gloves or a ring? Um, no, because I've got, I've got uh, four match guns as well. I don't really think I want to give up any of mine. Okay. Does anyone want those two items, or that's all? I mean, I'm going to be dead. So. <laughs> okay. Very good. That's it for Where tonight. The gloves of thievery, do the gloves of thievery require attunement? Um, no. I don't remember i don't think so they don't right. they do not okay let me see what my i actually let me uh i want to keep my wand of binding because that worked out really well the boots of striding spring i want to keep i'm gonna get i'll get rid of the eyes of my newt seeing gotcha and take uh take the uh, gloves of thievery okay you don't want eyes of my newt seeing and um, jeff got the crown okay very good next time we play eighth level uh we'll play in a week Yay. And you'll be able to get, hopefully, the last shard from the Dwarven um, complex. Thanks, guys. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.